Hi, I'm Jay Sanweiss, and I want to share with you a treatment that I gave to a Cirque du Soleil performing artist September of 2021. Uh, she flew out from Las Vegas when she's a trapeze artist there and had been suffering from a persistent shoulder problem that wasn't resolving. Uh, my friend and patient brought her in. I treated her that night, and she and he were gracious enough to let me videotape that for you, and I think you'll see that the results were quite impressive. So here we are with visual inspection, looking at shoulder levels, occiput levels, and then hip crest levels. This shows whether there's an obvious asymmetry to her posture affecting her shoulder. So we're gonna do that. Now I'm doing listening, a Jean-Pierre Barral technique to feel where I'm being pulled to. I feel that the stress is carried to the shoulder itself. This is the standing flexion test. When she bends forward, we can find which hip is stuck. Now we're checking passive abduction of her shoulder, and now I'm having her activate abduction of her shoulder, watching the landmarks, watching the shoulder blade, looking for muscle firing patterns. I found that there was some dyskinesis in the shoulder blade there. I'm pointing out to her that as she was moving like that, there was a problem. Now, by pulling her arms back and forth, it almost looks like a dance, I can feel the myofascial tension from her wrists all the way into her shoulder blades, and I'm comparing right and left, and what I realize is that when I pull, there's more tension on that one side, so now I'm gonna turn her radius bones at the elbow and see if they fully pronate, and I feel tension in that right radius that I just pointed out to her, and I feel a restriction in her wrist. So now I'm motion testing the wrist. Here I'm looking at her temporomandibular joint, asking her to open and close because the jaw can greatly affect the shoulder function. And in her case, she did have a little bit of a left TMJ issue. Now comes the important muscle testing portion. Testing the latissimus dorsi here which is a powerful, strong muscle that gives shoulder support. So I'm asking her to abduct, or to, excuse me, to adduct. And here you go again, seeing me testing that. Now we're gonna test the serratus anterior muscle, another important shoulder muscle. And then she's intact. And we're going through the muscles. Here comes the rotator cuff. This is the teres minor test. And she passes that with flying colors. But now here's a key first weakness. I'm showing her how she needs to stop me from doing that motion, but when I push, aha, I sense a weakness, give way weakness of the infraspinatus. Really important rotator cuff muscle stabilizer there. Now comes the subscapularis, the agonist or antagonist relationship to the infraspinatus, and sure enough, she was a little bit weak. Now I'm showing her how on the right side she has totally strong subscapularis and totally strong infraspinatus. So I just wanted to point out to her the difference so that she could appreciate that. So now we're going to go ahead and just, you know, test more muscles. I'm explaining to her how if she has loss of stability of the internal rotator and external rotator of the rotator cuff, that's going to have a great influence on her shoulder pain because the rotator cuff keeps that humerus in the glenoid socket. From here, I start motion testing her neck and looking for signs of cervical somatic dysfunctions because the nerve supply to the shoulder comes out of the neck. And sure enough, as I'm doing this, I come across some areas that resist rotation and side bending, and I can feel that those restrictions are directly related to the particular muscles that are showing up weak on her. So there was the weak test, and now seated, she was very weak on that infraspinatus, pointing out to her a model of the shoulder. So I'm trying to explain to her that when your neck has restrictions, it affects the nerve supply to the shoulder and then can cause muscle weakness. When the muscles are weak, then that leads to pain when you try to do things that involve shoulder stability and strength. So part of our treatment clearly is gonna be treatment of her neck. 
I'm now going down to test the abductors of her fingers, and she has motor weakness of the thumb and little finger abductors, and I'm pointing out to her the fact that that implies that she could have a problem with her first rib or her T1 area. I'm showing her the relationship between the thumb muscles, the thumb extensor there is being tested, and the uh, finger abductors. And in her case, she also is showing me signs of hypermobility, that she has very loose ligaments, and that can be a problem sometimes. Unless you're very athletic, hypermobility can lead to injury. Here she has weak muscles. The extensor uh, pollicis muscle tests weak on her, as does the abductor. She's okay there with the flexor. She's okay there with the opponent's digiti minimi. But when she spreads her fingers apart, I can easily push her little finger inward. And so I know there's a problem. Now I'm doing a myofascial leg pull test. And I can feel that there's tension and restriction in her right hip. I look at the landmarks of the anterior superior iliac crest. And sure enough, her hip is forward locked and resists motion. So I know that part of my treatment is going to need to treat that. And here comes one more really important muscle that we found weak on her, the middle trapezius. Just completely gives out. I point out to her, you're trying to do all these Cirque du Soleil things with two very weak shoulder muscles. Now I'm examining the sacral area and I have found a big restriction on the right side uh, of her sacrum, what's called a unilateral sacral extension by looking at the landmarks of the sacrum. So we're going to go ahead now and treat out with osteopathic manipulation some of the restricted areas. Here I'm about to perform a thrust, high velocity, low amplitude thrust. Scott, okay, is that fine? Uh-huh. It's been found to be restricted and that gave quite a nice sound that you just heard. And now here's another one a little higher up. This is where I'm taking the facet joints and opening them in the thoracic by doing a little bit of a twist and a thrust motion. And she feels a lot of release from that. The muscles instantly release. I'm motion testing the spinuses and I just located another big restriction of the first rib. Boom. And now she felt much, much relief from that and she even has responded that everything feels looser. So now I'm just kind of getting a sense of how things are and of course they feel much looser. Here we're going to go ahead and do a manipulation of her lumbar spine and her hip joint combined and we have her in a sideline thrust position. Boom! We just released the anominate. Now we go to her cervical spine where she does not uh, laterally translate to the left, meaning she cannot side bend to the right at C5. So I'm going to go ahead and localize the facet, set her up for a little thrust pos position, boom, and there we just released her C5 on C6. Now I'm re-examining the muscle strength because we just treated somatic dysfunction and sure enough her infraspinatus is now testing rock solid. She notes how much stronger it is. It takes very little to resist. So we immediately brought back the strength to those muscles that were weak. Now I'm going ahead and doing a correction on her sacrum lumbar with another side thrust. This is one more part of treating the pelvis sacral area. And now I go ahead and I recheck and she no longer has a positive standing flexion test. The pelvis is now symmetrical. The shoulders are nice and level. I ask her how she feels and she says, boy, I feel like my shoulders and ears are much farther apart, meaning my shoulders have come down. <clears throat> we now move to the acupuncture uh, portion of the treatment where I'm treating the cervical spine where it had shown problems, where I did my manipulations. I'm reinforcing that with neuroanatomical acupuncture placement in the cervical spine. Then I'm going to go ahead and put muscle or needles into the local muscles that were involved in the shoulder. And finally, I'm putting a few uh, acupuncture points downstream in the 
uh, bladder channel area that brings a lot of that energy down. We hook up those needles to this Pantheon electrical machine and pulsate at 4 to 15 hertz in an oscillating frequency. Uh, she had been laying there for about 15 to 20 minutes receiving that. I'm now removing the uh, leads and the needles. And finally, I'm rechecking and feeling that everything feels more symmetrical. It feels looser. Uh, the tissues now have a normal tone and uh, everything is just being checked for symmetry and balance. And now I finally ask her, how are you feeling? She says she feels really, really good. Usually we always end all treatments with the final muscle test to show that the neurology is established. Of course, now it's just absolutely rock solid. I think we commented Amazon strength and she can feel here we find also that the treatments that I gave her made her finger muscles that she had previously noted were chronic and old from a long time before we were able to strengthen her thumb and fingers by treating the neck and the first rib areas. So she's quite content with that. And here we are after the treatment, uh, both very pleased with the results. She went home the next day to Las Vegas and the next night performed at Cirque du Soleil.